Hey you guys, you ready to do some sleuthing work? So we're going to uh, do an investigation, a bit of a deep dive into uh, a non-accusation of cheating, right? So I had a message from uh, one of my buddies, student, who said I had a really interesting game, which I lost with a couple of blunders. Uh, my opponent played really, really well, um, but I don't think he was cheating. So, shall you and I take a, a deep dive into the recent activities of Tritty, uh, rated 941 in Rapid. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to go through the game that he played against my buddy, O.T. Milkar, and um, let's have a look. So, spotting a cheat is not an easy thing. Now, chess.com will have some very, very obvious tools, like, like level one. Has this person got the analysis engine open in another tab, for example, and playing the same game? If you do that, ban hammer, you'll, you'll get, you know, chucked off immediately. Um, the smarter cheat would probably have uh, an, a, a different analysis engine open on a different website, like, like Lee Chess or, or whatever. There's loads and loads around or on their phone or whatever. Um, but there are other patterns that you can look out for, right? not just the fact that you can see them with their engine. Um, so that's what we're, we're going to look at now. Now, one of the things that, that I've mentioned before is that they knock out their moves with metronomic uh, predictability. Okay? If the time that they spend thinking about their moves is remarkably consistent, even when, for example, let's say you're in a position where there's only one legal move, right? You're in check or something, there's only one move, and they take 15 seconds, and bang, they play the move, right? But there's a choice of what? Or, um, but what if they find a brilliant move that is completely not obvious and is actually really deep, and again, they take 15 seconds? To me, that would be a couple of red flags. Now, it's, it's very difficult to say 100% this person is a cheating scumbag, um, but, you know, all we can go on is the weight of evidence. So just for fun, and not meaning to... Uh, you know, accuse anyone at this point. Uh, let's go through this game. Okay, so we've got e4, e5. Okay, so Trity is playing with the white pieces. Ot Milk is playing with the black pieces. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, and the Lopez. Okay. So normal move here is a6. Yep, yeah, kick the bishop. And the exchange variation. Okay. So d takes c6 again is normal. And it does abandon this this pawn. Okay, so let's just look. We're, we're going to look at the time spent so far. Okay, by White. Okay, 12, 10, 7. Okay, 12 seconds over move one and 10 seconds over move two. In a 15 minute game. Mm -hmm. For these moves. E4, E5. And then 10 seconds. Okay. Slightly slow, I would say. Okay, then uh, bishop out, eight seconds he's taken, and now he takes 37 seconds. Okay, so these next four moves he takes longer. We recapture with the deep pawn, which is uh, the principled book move, I think. Knight takes the pawn, and now queen d4, yes. So hitting the knight and also hitting this pawn, and white cannot save both. Okay, so now five seconds to come back, hit the queen, queen takes e4, check, queen blocks, okay, and that was one minute 35 seconds over that move. Now there are only two legal moves on the board as far as I can see it. One is king f1 and one is queen e2. So here we've got a situation where there's only two possible moves. There is literally nothing else on the board, and he's taken a minute 90. Okay, so queen there, and we swap off queens, and now white's king has been forced to move and give up castling rights. Okay, um, and material is equal at this point in time. So, 
We have bishop f5, this is looking at the undefended pawn on c2. d3 blocks that, and that move was, so 6.3, 6.2, okay. Black now castles. So you have to say that maybe black's slightly better in this position, okay. Um, now from white, 27 seconds to find bishop e3. Rook to e8 pins the bishop on the king. Knight to c3 in 12 seconds, develops the other bishop, rook behind the king, 15 seconds. Now look at these, you see 27, 12, 15, 16, 28, 20, 12. Okay. So there's no particular signal there as such, but you're, you're, just, you're just looking for the, uh, for the balance. Okay, so here I suspect I would capture the bishop, yeah. Okay, so black captures the bishop, pawn recaptures. Now the king is looking like it might find some safety over there. Lift the rook, preparing to double up the rooks and come off to this pawn. Also, black here has the bishop pair, which could be an advantage in the end game, particularly with an open board. There's no pawns blocked off, so... Okay, e4, and that was 12 seconds. Bishop there pinning the knight on the rook. h3. 12 seconds and we exchange the bishop for the knight not 100 percent sure i would have done that but you know we've got five pawns six pawns here on, on light squares um but the, the the issue is going into the ending if you leave yourself with one colored bishop then your opponent could put all their pawns on that color and block that bishop out right or put all their pawns uh, and pieces on the other colour and goes to your bishop. So here, I suspect I probably wouldn't have traded, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, so g takes f3, and that was 11 seconds over that move. All right? Guy's got 10 minutes left on his clock. Bishop's just taken a pawn here. It's attacking the rook. The rook can't move because behind it is the king, so the rook's pinned. Okay? And he has an immediate recapture. And 11 seconds was taken. Interesting. Okay. So now rook e3. So now we have the doubled up rooks. But this pawn structure is fairly solid here. Rook across. 30 seconds. g6. Okay. Pretty obvious. h4. 39 seconds. h5 is played to stop the advance of the h-pawn. Um, knight to e2. 15 seconds. Uh, and now black takes over a minute and pushes this pawn here. So taking this square away from the knight, also blocking off his own bishop to some degree. You see, this solo bishop now, feels like the bishop pair is almost worth seven rather than six, you know. Um, okay, pawn advances now, 33 seconds. B5, E5, 22 seconds. And that actually traps the bishop. Okay, so this was definitely, well, this was a mistake because it's giving the bishop now only one diagonal. And then after this move, um, black's ears should have pricked up a little bit because the bishop now only has one square. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's, it's an understandable error, so particularly under a thousand. It's, it's, you know, it happens to everyone that. Okay, so bishop's trapped, and now b4, bishop capt captured, and we have c takes d6. Okay, so now um, white is up a minor piece. Uh, let's just look at this. e takes d6. White took 37 seconds. That's another little floating question mark there for me. Okay, we have f5 takes... So f5 offering up a pawn, 34 seconds taken. Hmm. Okay. We take the offered pawn, knight to f4. Aha, king to c7. And I can see a tactic here, because we have now moved our king into a forkable position. Knight to d5, check, forks. King has to move, takes, takes. And now we're down a full rook. Okay. So, <clears throat> this move... 
3.3 seconds, okay. So now, that, I mean, a move that quick does not suggest that someone's got time to flick to another window, make a move, see what the computer says, come back and make the move, right? So that 3.3 seconds is a human move, hands down. Okay, we have Rook here looking at the pawn, defend, can't defend everything. Okay, and here again, white is playing in 23 seconds, 17, 19, 25, 12, 16. It's all in that same kind of band. Um, but this is the one I think here. This move, 33 seconds. I mean, it's not, it's not not obvious. It, it, it is a decent move. 33 seconds and then 22 seconds to trap the bishop. Now, here's, here's the thing for me. If this was White's plan with playing f4, that he was going to play this and, and trap the bishop and win the bishop, right? And now Black, in 25 seconds, plays the wrong move and doesn't spot the tactic. Why another 22 seconds to play that? And then, after this, why 37 seconds to play that? Okay, so I think that's a good place to, to leave the game itself. Um, yeah, because now we go down. So this is quite interesting, actually. So let, let's just finish it off, actually. Okay, so we lose, we lose the rook to a fork. We lose that pawn. We lose that pawn. We lose that pawn. Okay, now here. Okay, so this move. 43 seconds. Okay, and you know maybe he wants to calculate it. Takes, takes. It's, it's a winning position either way, right? Black plays that. Twenty-three seconds taken to grab hanging pawn. Rook to here. Rook f6, grabbing a free pawn. Seventeen seconds. Okay, it's not incriminating. King to e2 is a good move, starting to centralise the king. Well, I mean, it's come out; it's got to come out of check anyway. Um, 19 seconds. Okay, he's got he's got two possible moves here: king there, king there, and it takes 19 seconds to choose between two moves, and they're all both pretty equal. Okay, this is good. We're coming after a pawn. Rook to h6. Now is threatening this pawn. Obviously, can't be defended. Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes in 12 seconds, okay? He's got a, a free pawn with check and 12 seconds taken. King there, check, king there, check, and the rook's going to fall, but no, checkmate, okay? Eight seconds taken. So, uh, let's look now at the analysis of that game, okay? So if you look at the report, 99 accuracy. Now 99 accuracy is possible, but this was a 39 move game, right? Most masters don't play with that level of accuracy over, over that many moves. So to me, <clears throat> that is um, an odd one. Now if you look, so here look at the graph, right? So Above the line is, is white. The best move possible is right on that little thin green line in the middle, okay? So the more it deviates away from there, the less far you are, the less far? The further you are from the best move, okay? So here, we have an inaccuracy on move five from white. So here we're looking at the game from white's perspective. So let's start again, okay? All book, all book. Okay, now, inaccuracy from white is only inaccuracy of the game is to grab the pawn. Now let's look, move five from white, 25 seconds, okay, that tells us nothing. Okay, so it's only inaccuracy of the game. And now, from the entire rest of the game, he's practically finding the best moves. Okay, 14, this was... Um, not the best move, it says the best move here was pawn to h3, kicking the knight away. Okay, but the move was... Okay. <coughs> so that wasn't 
what the computer says is the best move here. However, you know, different computers might have different ideas. So, but 99 accuracy. So the next thing that you would look at, okay, so this is dubious, very dubious at this point. So the next thing I would go, I would do is I would look at the player's recent um, performance. So let's go down this list, okay? So here we have a win. All players under a thousand, pretty much, okay? And here is one with 88. 88 over 24 moves is good accuracy, okay? There he's got 95. 99.6, okay? Um, and this is the game. 99.6, let's look at the times that he spent, okay? So here he's playing black. 1.6, 30, 14, 13, 8, 7, 6. Right, so basically he is finding the best moves on the board in less than 10 seconds in a 15 minute game. And then he takes a minute 35 and then 36. And then, you know, so it jumps around a bit. So sometimes, you know, sometimes even if they are using an engine, somebody might use an engine for some of the game and then find their own moves once they've got an advantage in other bits of the game so as not to trigger the, the signals of, of cheating. But here's the analysis for that particular game. Um, <clears throat> look at the chart again. So he's playing black again. One, no, that's a book move. It says it's not the best book move. Okay, so we'll just flip the board here. So this is a um, like Italian game. Um, so he's played this, and it says it's book, but not not the ideal. But hey, other than that, perfect. Look at this: N seven book moves, eight best moves, and that's it. Okay, that to me is starting to stink. And then this game, fifty-two. He's got. So he's gone from ninety-nine-six to fifty-two. And then here he's got a 79 and lost. 99. Then 65 and lost. Then 32. You just don't, you don't go from 99 to 32 on the same day. Okay. So on June 15, he's played a bunch of games. He's played about a dozen games on June 15. Here he's got 98. And then here he's got 51 and 60. So... <clears throat> I mean, to me alone, that kind of wild jumping from extremely high accuracy to normal levels of accuracy for, for you know, for his rating um, doesn't look right to me. Okay, so let's look at his um, his stats. He's just he's climbing up. He's he's played two hundred something games. He's lost more than he's won, which is a bit odd because you know he's climbed up from seven eighty right, in the last few weeks, climbed up from 780. So he's playing players who are sub 1000. And he's capable of playing with 95, 99, 99% accuracy. Okay. Now, if he's capable of that, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where these losses come from. I don't know where these low performances come from. So here, playing with 38 accuracy, it just it, it doesn't look right to me. I have to say this. So, um, so that's my feedback for Ed for OT Milka. Um, <clears throat> I am fairly confident that this guy is using an engine to cheat in some games. Right? Clearly, not all. Um, but it's just kind of going for that boost every now and again. And I think we've seen enough telltale signs to give us a strong suspicion on that score. Okay, so that's my personal evaluation. I'm not going to um, make an accusation as such, but um, I, I do think the signs are there, guys. Uh, so that's the kind of method that you could use if you have a game and somebody just pulls an absolute blinder out of the bag when you think it's way outside of their their uh, rating, the their kind of ability level that you would expect at that rating. Guys played no puzzles, 
He's done one, one puzzle, right? So how has he got from 780 to nearly a thousand in a little over two weeks, 20 days or so like that? Um, yeah, it's, it's a bit odd. It is a bit odd. Uh, so there you go. Um, that's my sleuth assessment of uh, Tritty's recent performance and uh, whether Ed wants to lodge a complaint about that, that's up to Ed. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, appreciate your support. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't subscribed, and I shall see you soon.